wondering how I managed to afford this Ferrari? Well, I didn't. It's fake. And since hundreds of you have been asking me to show you how I make my videos, here's how you can get yourself a fake supercar too. With the power of... It all starts like any project ever made, with an idea. I store them all in Google Drive and make a new Google Doc for each new separate idea. Google Docs is also what I use for... After opening the doc, I write down everything that's in my head on a topic into bullet points. And then it's just about expanding them one by one. The level of research differs based on the topic, like for the video about YouTube trends, I just wrote down as many as I could remember and that was that. But for the video about YouTube's competitor, I had to Google around a bit more. Script writing is my least favorite part of the process. I love writing and everything, but whatever I write just seems boring and mushy and lame for some reason. I don't think I have ever felt good after writing a script for a video. I also add these scene notes in box brackets around the script, like this one for the title of this video, or this one here, just so I don't accidentally forget a good idea. And that's it, the script is done. I use the Audio Technica 2020X microphone to record my voice, and to capture it, I use a free program called Audacity. Simply hit record, and since my scripts are written word for word, I just read them with no added context. Also, also because, because I'm in a room, room with a lot of echo, echo I, put I put a blanket, blanket over me and pretend I'm in a podcast, podcast studio. studio. Blah, 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 blah. After recording, I use the very basic noise reduction Audacity provides and export the voiceover using the extreme preset, because extreme equals quality. Then I run the voiceover through Adobe Podcast Enhancer. It's a web-based tool where you just upload your audio and let it do its work, and what comes out is your voice sounding like it was recorded in a podcast studio. For comparison, this is the voiceover before, and this is the voiceover after. It's not a big difference, but I'm happy with it. This tool is so good that for this video here, I recorded my audio on my phone, which sounds something like this. And the enhancer saved it so well, no one could tell the difference. Download the enhanced voiceover and place it in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is where I cut off all the unusable sentences and the stutters, and since I'm not a native English speaker, there's usually a lot to cut off. I use the very expensive cutting edge modern technology of pen and paper. This is my actual storyboarding notebook. Before any film school students come crashing out in the comments, yes, I know this isn't how you do it, but I'm lazy. You can tell by the gaps between my videos. I just put in the scene number, write a part of the script the window is for, and then draw whatever I come up with. If I'm lacking inspiration, I will rewatch some of Something Else YT's or Odd Ones Out's videos, because that's the vibe I'm going for. See those amazing views? <laughs> yeah, at least half of that is just me. You're welcome, Adam, I just paid your rent. Now, my videos consist of two major types of shots. I have the fully animated shots where most of the action takes place, and then we have the static shots, where it's just me in the corner with some props. Once my storyboard is done, I will cut up the audio into tiny snippets and export them one by one into a folder called Audios, with a Z, cause I'm one of the cool kids sitting in the back of the bus. Wait, not this kind of bus. These audio snippets each cover one scene and I also like to export them in order and give them numbers, so I don't have to remember which one goes where. Now on to the Blender setup. I immediately changed the resolution to 1920 by 1080 for full HD and set it to 24 frames per second. I then import a skybox to illuminate my scene and I just recently bought this pack of 15 anime style skyboxes for like 10 bucks on fab and they are amazing. Lastly, I turn the render samples down to 32. Since I render my animations in the EV engine, it doesn't really change much. Pardon the interruption, but this video is sponsored by Coopert. Coopert is a free browser extension that helps you save money with over 6 million active users all over the internet. Every time you reach the checkout page, Coopert automatically tests all the available coupons and applies the one that gives you the best deal. On top of that, Coopert's cashback rewards are supported by over 76,000 retailers, including giants such as Walmart or Timu. Activate the rewards before finishing your purchase, and a portion of the commission will be returned to your account. You can then easily withdraw your cashback via PayPal, gift card, or even bank card. That's pretty cool. And best of all, while you browse online stores, Coopert automatically finds other platforms and retailers selling the same product and shows you where you can get the best deal. Wow, look at the comparison! This is my favorite feature. 
and it's all free. Just check out the link in the description, install Coopert and never overpay for your goods online ever again. Thanks a million to Coopert for sponsoring this video. I drag and drop my audio into Blender, make a new collection named the same way as the audio and import my characters. To rig Neon, I used the default Blender human rig and deleted one finger off of it. Too bad, a cartoon's got a cartoon. If you want to know how I made this character, check out this tutorial by Joey Carlino. I basically just followed that step by step. I used this same exact method to rig all of my characters. Model it out, human rig, fix up the mistakes, all done. And for cars, I used the rigger car plugin, which is super fast and allows you to pull off poses like this very quickly. I also use a grease pencil outline for almost all of my characters to give them a more cartoony feel, but it must be hidden while animating, otherwise you'll just <laughs> To fill in the backgrounds and the objects in the scene, I use Sketchfab. This is my guardian angel and my savior. Thank you, my lord, thank you, thank you. Here you can search up 3D models and filter by those you can legally use. So let's say I'm liking this background and I'm liking this model over here. I download them each in the GLB format all the way at the bottom because when you import that one, all the textures are already placed. Then it's just a matter of putting everything in the right place, adding a camera, animating my rigs according to the audio and voila, the scene is done. After my animation is done, I go into draw mode and change up Neon's face based on what I'm currently talking about in the video. If there are any characters in the background such as these soldiers marching in my previous video, I just get a low poly model and upload it to Mixamo. Mixamo is a website where you can upload and rig your model and you can pick from hundreds of animations, most captures by real life actors. This is way quicker than rigging and animating the character myself. Remember, the holy truth of 3D animation. If someone has done it before you, don't waste your time making it yourself. Applies to models, animations, backgrounds, whatever especially if you're working solo. If I had to model everything in my videos myself, my first video would not have even come out yet. I would have still been working on it for like the ninth month. Well, now that the scene is finished, I just copy the name of the collection, set the render to a JPEG sequence, make a new folder, paste the name, go into it and paste the name again for the image sequence. I put each scene into a separate folder because a JPEG sequence means there's gonna be a lot of images. Lastly, I turn on the shadows, ray tracing and motion blur, each of them giving the shot a bit more mm. The outlines aren't really affected by motion blur, resulting in a weird movement combo, but uh, I don't know how to fix it, so whatever. Now that the render is finished, I don't delete the collection, I just turn it off, so in case I need to change it up later, I can still come back to it and re-render. And now it's just a matter of animating each and every scene, which normally takes about 7 centuries. I know I haven't shown much of the technical process, but putting that in a video would make it 4 hours long, so if you would watch me livestream animation here on YouTube, let me know in the comments. Also, while you're here, don't forget to subscribe and hype the video, it will help me a lot. Thank you. I put all of my animations into Premiere Pro by creating a separate folder, importing every animation by highlighting the very first image and then checking image sequence. Then, and this is very important, I right click each one, go to interpret footage and change the frame rate to 24 FPS. I don't know why Premiere does this and I haven't found a way to change it yet, but it's pissing me off. And after dragging and dropping each animation into place, we have to finish them up. Sometimes in my videos, I'll point to a blank space and a video sample shows up. Or a number counter. For all those effects, I use Adobe After Effects. I simply highlight the scene I want to edit, right click and then hit Replace with Dynamic Link. This opens the snippet in After Effects. Here I add some example videos, round their corners and I also like to have my items bobble around a bit. I use the wiggle expression to do this and it just feels more dynamic and more alive when it bobbles around I think. This is why most of my static shots are done in After Effects, it's just easier to add some movement. When I go back to Premiere, the snippet automatically updates so I don't have to do anything else. And if I want to change anything, I just go back to After Effects, move something around and it automatically updates in Premiere. When I get to this part of the process, I know the video is about two days from being released, so I'm usually way more excited to do this than animating scene number 10. I put on my default background music, which is 3pm from Animal Crossing, the one you're hearing right now, 
Then I add sound effects one by one, usually a lot of whooshes, body hits, typewriters or number counters. I use free sound to get my sound effects whenever I can, but if everything else fails, I'll just go to good old YouTube and search for big boom with the glass breaking and cat meowing sound effect. Oh yeah. <coughs> and now the most difficult part. I have the Lenovo Legion 5i laptop and I do everything on it. For a $1500 laptop, it renders incredibly fast, but don't worry, I started off with this pile of shit. You don't need a laptop like mine. This bad boy took about 8-9 to nine hours of rendering sometimes, but he did his best. 07. He will not be missed. He was slow and ugly. After every scene is done, and I made sure to stretch my outro to at least 8 minutes, I just highlight the entire sequence, open up Adobe Media Encoder, and just let it do its thing. Mr. Beast, the god of YouTube himself, has said that thumbnails are sometimes more important than the video itself. That being said, I am incredibly shit at making them. I either struggle for days to come up with a good one, or get a streak of genius and make a masterpiece. No in between. I still always make at least two to three versions just so I can run a thumbnail test. Bam, oh, bop, bada bop, boom, pow. I have a habit now of posting a few random screenshots from the video and post it on YouTube. If anyone guesses the topic of the next video based on these, I will give you a bag of pistachios. Somehow. Then it's just waiting for the copyright check and scheduling a video for the next day. The next day. And the next day? Being depressed that the video did really bad. <laughs> After posting a video, I take about a two day break, relax, and then it's back to the Google Doc drawing board. If you like this video, check out this one, where I talk about why there are no 3D store time animators on YouTube, or this one, where I rank old YouTube trends in a tier list. Life is short, so thanks for wasting a bit of it here. Merry Christmas, and until next year.